Okay, good morning. Happy Monday, CWCC. Welcome to Girls Club. We have a very awesome, badass woman with us today, Tara Dunn. Tara, thank you so much for being with us. I know our members are going to love to hear from you, kind of fresh off of our business owners boot camp where you were last week and so many got to hear a little bit of your story. Thanks for being with us today. Why don't you just start out by introducing yourself? Okay. Um, well, thank you for having me. It's really nice to be here and hello to all the members. I'm excited that members are one year into our crazy pandemic and hopefully getting closer to being out of it so we can all see each other again soon. Um, so I'm Tara Dunn and I'm the president and founder of Highmark Law, which is a business law firm in Denver. Um, I've been doing it about four years and i um, I, this is my second round of being an entrepreneur in the early 90s. My former husband and I opened a brewery in Denver called the Great Divide. And I ran that with him for eight years before going to law school to help make sure that we got paychecks from more than one different address. Perfect. And um, went to law school when my twins were five and going to kindergarten. And um, after I graduated from law school, I kind of wrapped myself up at the brewery, worked my way out and started practicing law about 15 years ago. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's who I am. And that's awesome. You know, I've never asked you, where does the name Highmark come from? I love it. Oh, thank you. It's so funny that you say that. Um, so it comes, it's a made up word. And when I was trying to, I knew I was gonna start this law practice. I, I, I didn't know for long. It was kind of an emergency bailout of a company that I was in mm -hmm. that was, going under financially and I was carrying around a notebook. So I had my, like my work notebook and, you know, I always use like a small notebook. Here's my current size, like uh -huh. it has stuff in it. Yeah. I like and, those. And so I was carrying it around, but I carried one around that was just all about starting my business. And so like, I'd have a page where I'd just like write down, what are adjectives about you? What are these things? And so I'd look at all those. And when I started, I actually didn't start with the name Highmark. I started with like my initials, you know, I just formed an LLC with the secretary of state because I didn't want to pick like a crappy name. <laughs> so and I didn't want to be like done in associates because yeah. I feel like what I'm doing is like kind of a more modern version of practicing law. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's not the big white shoe thing. It's I'm wearing jeans, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I, I kept all these names and then I asked some friends who are in PR. I was like, how do I do like a survey to get like business people and lawyers? I just want to get people's input to react to names, you know? And they said, well, you can only have like five or six. I'm like, no, no, no. I have like 20 that I really yeah, like. Right. <laughs> they made me narrow it down. And I, I put out names and I had questions that I made up like, you know, which of these sounds like high quality? Which ones of these sound like whatever? And uh, do you have a special connotation or do any of these names make what you think of a certain word? And um, so I had my five names. Hi, Mark is my son, Cormac, came up with that. He's a- oh baby I won't call him a baby analyst anymore because I think he's a he's got a different name he's an associate at an investment bank in San Francisco but he that was a name he came up with and it was in my ones that I thought were the favorites and then I did this survey of like you know 30 people some lawyers some business people a lot of people through the uh, Denver chamber and that mm -hmm. was the winning name I love it thank you and I love that it was from your son I know it is Constant kind of special. Reminder. That's sometimes awesome. I sometimes I get confused about it. I think you may have this too. I don't know, but like if, if you focus on a word too long, it just doesn't make any sense anymore. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Yeah. So sometimes I'm like, that's a made up word. Like it doesn't make any sense, but a lot <laughs> of people like it and it's unique. So it works. It's <laughs> a made up word and a new style and way of doing business for an attorney. So I love it. Yeah. Well, so, you. okay, we're going to mix this up a bit and we're going to get right to our questions so that we can um, talk about a topic that's that you're passionate about at the end, which I love to mix it up and do things differently. So, Tara, tell us about a time in your life when you've persevered and how you got through it. Okay. Um, well, as I said, I started my law practice kind of just ejected out of a business that filed for bankruptcy two weeks later. I was the last lawyer remaining in the U.S. for this international company. And um, I started my practice in 2017. And um, the first like nine months, I was going gangbusters. It was just, I was so busy. I mean, I really, I'm, I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. And I really felt like the universe 
gave me all this business so I wouldn't freak out. <laughs> and right. so I wouldn't panic as a new business owner. And I guess having done this before and struggled through it, like I know what those panics feel like. So um, I was officing at a friend's office. It was an unrelated business. They had me there for free. And we kind of roll into spring of 2018. It's I'm still super busy. And then all of a sudden, um, it kind of all coincided, but uh, I found out that my friend's business was going to move to somewhere that wasn't very convenient for me. Uh, one of my kids had a health scare and all of a sudden I didn't have any work, <laughs> like no business, uh, no leads on the horizon and um, no line of sight for revenue. And I had two kids in college, they're twins. They were in their, um, mm -hmm. just starting their senior year. And I was like, oh my God. Um, so I just started really like shaking the trees, you know, I mean, I am a power networker and I talked to everyone that I knew that made sure they knew what I was doing. Um, I went to a lot of coffees. I went to a lot of events. Like I worked just as hard on, <laughs> it's not nothing, but nothing, right? Uh, Non-billable work. And I just, but I was really, really anxious. And so um, that fall kind of right around the same time, two things together, my my second kid to leave for, for fall because he was on quarters. I took him to the airport, but I remember waking up that morning and being like really, really anxious. <laughs> and I was like, I have to come up with a way to manage this. And I'm a big road cyclist, so I ride my bicycle a lot. And I, I was really good about continuing to do that, but I, I was like, I still need to find a way to feel better. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I dropped Liam off at the airport and I stopped at Target to buy a journal. And then I saw this book that I'd heard about called You're a Badass uh -huh. by Jen Sincero. And I was like, well, maybe I should read that, you know, and, and kind of write it. And she was saying things about, you know, like you kind of need to manifest your stuff and you create what you focus on and what you think about. And I was like, oh yeah, I believe in that. And um, the other thing that happened was I came to visit a friend of mine in his office, which actually is this office that I'm sitting in right uh -huh. now. Um, and he officed at this shared workspace building and I didn't have any revenue and I didn't want to move to the other free office. So I came over here, had a glass of wine with Justin. He showed me around. There was this one person office that's like, I'm looking at it right now. It's as big as a shoebox. It's a cross uh -huh. <laughs> And I asked the people here, I'm like, how much does that cost? Do you do like three months or month to month? And they're like, no, we do a year. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but then I was like, you know what? You have to kind of level up to what you think you need to do. And, you know, there were a lot of great reasons to be in this space. And this was of course pre-corona, but it's a great place to meet with people. So um, I, I just, I signed that lease. I, I took quotes from Jen Sincero's book and other people. And literally I made a calendar appointment, one different one every day. And I just made it repeat monthly and it would just pop up at a random time in the day. And it would say things like, you know, something I would, you know, trust does not mean without fear. Or, you know, I had all kinds of crazy ones. I've had, I, I told myself I ate nails for breakfast. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I do, I do have those things. <laughs> Yeah. Just like whatever you can do to kind of, you know, stay positive. And, but what was crazy is as soon as I signed the agreement at my office, work started pouring in from places I could have never right. explained, you know, and the other thing that's interesting about it is um, all of my clients, everybody I have worked for since I started my practice four years ago had been people that I either worked with in law firms before who are general counsels of businesses or they are referrals from people that I know or have done legal work for. So I haven't had one single client that I've done anything for that wasn't somehow connected right. to someone I know or work I've done. So I think I, I think that's a good sign. <laughs> well, and I, you know what I love about this? You you shared that story in our business owners boot camp, and I have to tell you, it's so inspiring for me because oftentimes I think, and this isn't you know, there's research to prove this, you know, women, we tend to carry the burden of like the families and, 
you know, making sure that things are safe at home. And sometimes I feel like that carries into work too. And so oftentimes I don't feel like we as women take risks Mm -hmm. and as a result, we don't always grow. Right. And so to me, like what an amazing badass thing to do to be like, yeah, I'm going to fricking sign this lease and it will come. And it's true. It just does. And I love how, like, you know, you talk about the billable hours too, because I feel like women get caught up in that stuff too. Like I'm having all these meetings. They're not leading to anything. We hear that at the chamber all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I've met with all these people. They haven't given me business. It will, it will. It's just about building relationships. And if you have relationships with people, it may never turn out to be anything, but at least you have these relationships. You're lifting one another up as women. And that's the most important thing. And I always think that good things happen from that, you know? I'm really glad that you brought that up about lifting each other up too, because a lot of what I did during that time, and I'm going to maybe segue into our next question, but a lot of what I did during that time, you know, it wasn't just networking. It was Mm -hmm. life working, right? With people and friends and other women in business. And, um, you know, I think... um, especially, I think, especially for women, um, we need to kind of help model and, and, and help each other. Um, I talked to a lot of women that I thought were just really, really inspiring and super fierce and friends of mine. And, Mm -hmm. um, they were, you know, that's part of how you get through this. And, um, so yeah. And I think the risk thing, I think you're right. It's so easy to not want to do that. I mean, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to start a business and I have kids in college and I have no clients, you know? Um, but even then I was like, well, okay. So if it doesn't work, then the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to be looking for a job, which I kind of have been doing while this company has been Mm -hmm. dying anyway. So just be the same thing and just be a little later. And I'd have to kind of, you know, brush myself off from not having my business work out if that happened. But I also then was like, wait a minute, if it doesn't work, no one's going to think you suck. You know, they're going to think you were brave. Right. (laughs) But I was so paranoid about like what the thought would be too when I started, you know, what will it look like? And I was, I was the chair of a fairly big nonprofit board at the time. And I just remember standing up in front of like 600 people thinking, here I am, I'm Tara. I have a new business with a made up name and I have no <laughs> idea if I'm going to be here next year. I'll let you know. <laughs> and you are, and you're, you're just doing so well and it's inspiring to be around you and to hear your story too. All of oh, them. Thank you. Uh, I'll never forget when you and I met, we were both in um, a, a hair salon getting our hair <laughs> colored. And I think it's just so interesting how, you know, your life comes full circle, but, you know, just in the space that I'm in in my life, how, you know, being around women like you, what always comes to mind for me in like business and in life is warrior. Like there's these women that, that you're surrounded with and we're fighting the good fight and persevering together. And they're so important to have around at critical points of your life. And you're definitely one of those for me. Oh, so thanks thank you. for inspiring thank you. me. Okay. What's a mantra that you live by? You sort of alluded to it. Um, I, let's see. Well, I had, I actually wrote down two when I was thinking about them. I think I'm going to go with two and I'm going to go out of order. The first one is don't ignore universal cues. And that's, that's my thing about, um, like the universe sends out little, you know, it's almost like Hansel and Gretel, but Mm -hmm. if you're not looking, you don't see it. (laughs) And so like things happening, like when I came over to this office and I was super panicked about whether or not it would make sense to make a commitment like that. And when I said, do you have any one person offices opening? And they said, the only one we have opening is across the hall from your friend, (laughs) you know, and it looks through into his office and out Uh the window. And I was like, well, that's random, you know, (laughs) when I wanted to start my business, somebody, I, I went to an event that I didn't feel like going to. Um, It's Carrie Crandall's group called Women of Mm -hmm. Mergers and Acquisitions Network. And she was going to have a speaker that was, it was more on kind of a professional and self-development thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh God, I have no energy for that. Like, that's the last thing I can do today. Yeah. And I still went and I ran into some friends and they said, what are you doing? And I, you know, how's it going? We're, it was the after, you know, kind of networking time. And I said, 
uh, I, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but I think I might start my own law practice, you know? And I was like, I don't even, I've only said that to one person even. Right. And they all kind of like, Pachoo! and said like, oh my gosh, you're, I'll do it. Oh my gosh, this would be great. You know? And I was like, but, but then, I, but that's like a universal cue, right? Like people mm -hmm. picking up on that, that makes sense. So that's one of them. And then my other, one of the other ones is Sir Richard Branson. And it's, if your dreams don't scare you, they're too small. <laughs> totally. I can assure you I'm afraid all the time. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's so true. Somebody told me once, like the minute that you get comfortable, it's time to do something that makes you uncomfortable. It's so true. And it, it kind of sucks, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, you're in a constant state of, you know, discomfort, but you're getting, you know, you're growing and yeah. you're, and, you know, you and I have talked about this um, so often, you know, like, I love that you said, you know, don't ex ignore signs from the universe because you and I have talked so much about energy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like tapping into that. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because you've certainly done such an amazing job of creating the life and things in your life that you want Aww. by paying attention to that. Thank you. And, you know, you and I both work with Shoshana. I do because of you and mm -hmm, others mm -hmm, that have mm -hmm. told me. And it is so interesting to me, like, and I've told Shoshana so often, like, I'm not sure I buy into any of this stuff, but every time I talk to her, whatever I set my intention to do, I'm on the path to do it. So yeah, talk yeah. a little bit about that. I love yeah, your story. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to this. Yeah. Um, and so um, when I was kind of trying to sort my way through all this nervous anxiety time, a friend of mine who I knew already, uh, Alicia Huck, who's a badass, mm -hmm. works at Maverick and Company. She was like, you, you really need to meet Shoshana French. And I was like, what does she do? And she was explaining it to me and it sounded pretty woo woo to me. Yeah. Like exactly. she does energy work and intuition work, that's weird. Um, and I have to qualify myself. It's almost sillier that I was skeptical because I have a master's in counseling psychology. So right. if anybody should be able to turn on the woo-woo, I ought to be, but I uh -huh. still was like, nope, nope. I'm a very serious lawyer. I can't, you know. Um, so anyways, at Alicia's urging, I met with Shoshana French and her business is called Simple Spirit. And I just went and met with her a couple of times and, and, you know, we were talking about some career goal stuff I had and I was talking about um, that I'd been single for a long time and it was, you know, I was really ready for a more serious relationship than serial dating of one or two dates with all these different people and none of them work out. Um, and so we, we started working together. And that, the other thing was a bunch of my friends were like, you really need to listen to Brene Brown. And I'm mm -hmm. like, who is yeah, that? Yeah. You know, like poo poo. And, um, <laughs> and so Shoshana and I did some work and I realized I needed to work on some stuff around kind of trusting myself. And, mm -hmm. um, and then, so I decided to kind of listen to some Brene Brown stuff. So I started doing that and that was actually really helpful. It was kind of doing it together. And I actually did a training. So I'm, I'm certified trained and dare to lead through someone that Brene trains awesome. to teach it. Um, so I learned a lot of cool leadership stuff, but the thing that Shoshana and I got to that I think is the thing you're, you're wanting me to get at is um, at some point along the way, so I've been working with her for about two years, I said, I have been coming from a place of fight or flight for a long time. Like I got divorced when my kids were 10 and then I was a part-time single mom working in these mega law firms, you know, killing me. Uh, I was learning a lot. I was making a lot of money. It was great, but it was just like this harrowing existence. Right. And then they went to college and one had a health scare and, you know, and I, I'm a one person household. And um, I was, and then I started, I was in a business that was failing. And then I started my own business. And I was like, those all were legitimate fight or flight times, right? Like yeah. that, that's useful. Uh -huh. But then there's times when it's not. And I said, I don't think I'm there anymore, but I think I kind of approach my time all the time. Like everything I look at, I'm still coming at it like. Yeah, and, right. And so, used to that right? <laughs> and so Shoshana and I decided that I would set energetic priorities. And so it was what I want my life to feel like energetically, but also it's um, kind of a, a using those priorities when I make decisions about, do I want to do this or not? Do I want to go to that? Do I want to make time for that? Is that person good in my life? Does that, does that meet 
that does it feel right you know mm -hmm. so it's kind of a way to have words to go with your intuition a little bit but also words to go with your intention so my energetic priorities are authentic joyful calm and grateful and so i use those to test stuff out but i also use those when i'm getting all like eh, i've got these deadlines i'm freaking out and then i'm like what do i you know slow down it, it's not fight or flight you know yeah you have all these deadlines yeah everybody wants something at the same time but you're getting to do it in the way you want to do it so it mm -hmm. still fits it's just a more busy time of fitting still in a in a, a business you know kind of career world that works better for what i want to be and how i want to be so awesome I love it. And I love your words. It is really who you are. Oh. I feel that all that, you, you know, that authentic joy um, every time I'm around you. And it's interesting yeah. that it's authentic joy because, you know, you're one of those people that has this like calm, joyous presence about you, right? Like not like other people who are like, oh, you know, like, I'm so happy. <laughs> you know, you're very like, you're just like inherently joyful to be around. So mm, those are thank you. amazing words for you. Thank you. Well, and you know, it's funny, authentic was a really hard one to come to because um, I, I was very much perfectionist for, you know, a lot of my life. And as a, as a kid growing up in the family that I grew up in, which is a good family, but nutty, like everybody's mm -hmm. right. Um, being a perfectionist was useful. And in my sure. marriage, in with the partner that I was with, mm -hmm. you know, being a perfectionist was useful. And then this far along, being perfect and trying to have that perfect exterior, I've realized, you know, from working through Brene stuff and Dare to Lead that, um, you know, that's armor and that keeps people from knowing the real you. So I've, I've backed way the hell off of, you know, appearances and making sure everything's perfect and caring that this is there and this little thing's there and I and with myself right which I think has um, made it so I can be more open in my professional relationships and my personal relationships just not having to have this made up standard I think um, and and that ne that never goes away right like some of that programming yeah. stuff you're yeah. going to work against it all the time <laughs> yeah but I do think that learning to be okay with not looking like you're always killing it because you're not right. And, and that's a lot of extra pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think in the calmness, it's funny when I was growing up, I raced bikes uh, for 10 years really seriously. And um, you know, like on a national level, and I used to do a relaxation exercise that I learned from one of the sports psychologists at the mm -hmm. Olympic Training Center. And you used a word, and my word was calm. So this word is like a word that I've had in my, I forgot about it, right? Yeah. I knew about it when I was 17, 18, 24, yeah. but I forgot about it. And so when I was coming up with words, I'm like, oh my God, of course, calm, you know? <laughs> It's so interesting because everything you're talking about is changing mindset to be in equilibrium with where you are now, mm -hmm. right? Because when you yeah. spend so much time in one that serves you, yeah, then you're in this new one and it's not serving you anymore. And sometimes it's really hard to see that, you know? And so I just That's love it. You've been such a monumental inspiration for me. And I'm so happy that you're involved with the chamber and that I get to see you so often. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank um, you. I'm so glad to be involved with the chamber and I'm so glad that you're running it because I really am so excited about all the new things that are available and ways that we can um, network and support each other, especially during the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, it's just been unbelievable. I've needed it. I've just felt so blessed this past year to be a part of this organization because I needed the connection so bad. Yeah. So, well, thank you, Tara. Thank, thank you for you. Your members. It we'll was great. Soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.